As we've seen time and again, there's no movie like a heist movie. The bad guys are the good guys, living glamorous lives, forming fantastic teams and pulling off stunning victories based on courage and meticulous planning. Think Ocean's Eleven, or The Usual Suspects, or The Italian Job. And maybe most of us are dreaming about what it must be like to live in that situation, but reality can sometimes script better tales than fiction ever can. We are taking full advantage of this at Top Trending, and in this episode we bring you 10 individuals and the deceptive intrigues that they've weaved to outwit law enforcement officers, making them the 10 smartest criminals of all time. The Skyway Man, Frank Adam, and Robert Conrad are just some of the names that this con artist was known by. Frank William Abagnale Jr., who was made famous by the Leonardo DiCaprio star Catch Me If You Can, started his illustrious career as a con man at the young age of 16, stealing thousands of dollars from his own father via credit card fraud. He then moved on to check forgeries and other such bank frauds to fund his jet-setting lifestyle. Impersonating a Pan Am pilot by faking an employee ID and pilot's license, he traveled to 26 countries by deadheading. Mr. Abagnale's most daring hoax was when he put an out-of-order signboard on a bank collection drop box, with directions to hand over any deposits to the security guard. Dressed up as the security guard, he coolly walked away with the envelopes of cash intended for the Dropbox. In his short career of about six years, Frank impersonated an airline pilot, a doctor, a teaching assistant, and a lawyer. Amazingly, after being caught, convicted, and sentenced to 12 years in prison, he got paroled after serving less than five years in prison and has since been on the right side of the law, helping law enforcement agencies and financial institutions prevent fraud through his security consultancy company. On August 6, 2005, in the town of Fortaleza in Brazil, a gang of burglars stole 165 million real, or $71.6 million, from the Banco Central. The stolen money was all in old and damaged 50 real notes that had been taken out of circulation and untraceable, their modus operandi tunneling 256 feet under the city. Three months before the robbery, the gang rented a commercial property in the vicinity of the bank and set up a landscaping business as a front. As a result, no one thought twice about the truckloads of dirt that were seen leaving the premises regularly. The burglars thought of everything. The tunnel was well lit and ventilated. The premises were dusted with lime to avoid any fingerprints. They even managed to cut through 3.6 feet of reinforced concrete to enter the bank's vault. It is believed they may have had an insider at the bank helping them with their information on the alarm system and location of the vault. Some of the gang were caught and sentenced to prison, but many have become victims of kidnapping for ransom. Luis Fernando Ribeiro was one such victim, found murdered with seven gunshot wounds after his family paid the ransom money. Some corrupt police officers were thought to be behind the kidnapping and murder, and two were even arrested. Despite several arrests made in this case, only 20 million of 165 million real have been recovered. Ted Kaczynski, infamous as the Unabomber, was the subject of the FBI's longest and most costly investigation. Between 1978 and 1995, he was single-handedly responsible for a nationwide bombing campaign trying to start a revolution, mailing a series of increasingly sophisticated bombs that killed three people and injured 24 more. He had abandoned his career as a mathematician at UC Berkeley to move to a primitive lodge in Montana, where he used scrap materials to hand-make bombs, leaving no forensic evidence whatsoever, and choosing victims at random based on just library research. Research. A 150-member federal task force struggled to profile and identify him, until 1995, when they decided to publish a 33,000-word manifesto he had sent, in the hope that someone might identify him. And they did. The Unabomber's brother David identified his writing style, and tipped off investigators to the location of the wooden cabin that the brothers had built in interior Montana, where they found and arrested him. He dismissed his defense attorneys during the trial because they wanted to plead insanity, and he believed he wasn't insane, and is now serving a life sentence without possibility of parole at the Supermax prison in Colorado. Colorado. The most chilling part of this story of genius turned madman is what he underwent as an undergraduate at Harvard University. For three years from age 17 to age 20, Ted Kaczynski was a part of a study designed to measure how people react under stress. It was a purposely brutalizing psychological experiment where the subjects were every week faced with vehement, sweeping, and personally abusive attacks against their egos and most cherished ideals and beliefs. Perhaps this was a turning point that instilled in his mind the fear of modern society and technology and seeded the reign of terror. At number 7 on this list, we have Leonardo Notarbatolo, considered the mastermind of an epic burglary at the Antwerp Diamond Center. Dubbed the heist of the century, the burglars made off with a loot of diamonds, cash, and jewelry with an estimated value of $100 million from the safe deposit vault of the center on the night of February 15, 2003. The subterranean vault in the second basement floor of the center was protected by nine security measures, including a combination dial with 100 million possible combinations, a key lock, built-in seismic sensors, locked steel grate, magnetic sensors, 
sensors, light sensors, heat and motion sensors, and external and internal security cameras. Careful planning over a two-year period and a team of five very skilled individuals made this heist possible. Natar Bartolo rented an office space in the building two years before the heist, gaining an all-access key pass to the building, including to the vault area. He also built credibility as a diamond merchant, making himself familiar to the security guards. The team of burglars consisted of a maker of keys, an alarm system specialist, an expert lockpicker, electrician, and mechanic. After successfully making off with the contents of 109 of the safety deposit boxes in the vault, one of the team panicked, and a garbage bag of all the evidence was dumped by the side of the road. This was discovered and led to the arrest of four of the five of the team. However, the loot from this operation has never been recovered. The Pink Panthers are an international jewel thief network that are reportedly responsible for the theft of over $500 million worth of golden jewelry in over 350 robberies in 20 different countries across Europe, America, Asia, and Australia. The name was given by the British press in 2003, after a stolen diamond ring was found hidden in a jar of face cream, in much the same way that Peter Sellers had hidden a diamond in the crime comedy series The Pink Panther. Since then, though, the real-life Pink Panthers have accomplished some of the most audacious and glamorous heists in history, like the time in 2005 they posed as tourists in St. Tropez, robbed a jewelry store, and left on a speedboat. Or in 2006 Biarritz, where they painted the bench opposite the store they targeted, so that potential witnesses wouldn't sit there. Or in Dubai 2007, when they drove a pair of Audi S8s into a jewelry store window, and drove away in less than three minutes with more than $3 million of watches and diamonds. Recently, they've expanded their realm of operation, with the largest art robbery in European history. Four paintings worth over $163 million from a Zurich museum. And then they continued to set records with the the largest diamond theft in European history, $136 million worth. Who are these people, you wonder? Well, it's actually between 200 and 220 of them, a spider web of connections between small groups of ex-Yugoslav armed personnel from Serbia, Montenegro, Croatia, and Bosnia, countries where they're now revered as folk heroes, and Pink Panther's movies have become legend. Next on this list is a man whose real name no one ever knew. Even his identity when he was caught and imprisoned is said to be made up. Yet he was the most flamboyant con man in his time, and the name he preferred above all others was Count Victor Lustig, born in Czechoslovakia. He first became adept at cheating at cards, making merry on the transatlantic ocean liners. After the war broke out, he set up operations in America, scamming numerous banks and rich individuals into parting with their money. One of his best-known tricks was the Romanian money box, which was supposed to produce an exact replica of a banknote inserted into it. He sold this box at a huge price to hundreds of customers. But perhaps the best known of his scams is how he sold the Eiffel Tower. In 1925, he had a forger create some French government notepaper and invited a group of Paris leading scrap dealers to a meeting where he convinced them that the upkeep of the Eiffel Tower was becoming too much for the city, and so they were looking to sell it to be dismantled as scrap. He followed up with one of the interested dealers, pretended that he was a corrupt official, and disappeared with both the bribe as well as the sale money. The crime was never reported, probably because the so-called buyer was too embarrassed. And so Count Lustig tried to on the same scam again, only this time he was forced to escape from the police. His reputation as a con man caught up with him eventually. After being convicted as being part of a counterfeiting operation that had been running for five years, jail authorities refused to believe his repeated complaints of ill health. He was eventually diagnosed of having severe pneumonia and died in 1947, aged 57. At number four on our list is Gerald Blanchard, a Canadian who committed some really daring thefts until he was caught, and apparently turned over a good leaf through the persistent effort of two local policemen. Born in 1972, his career began at the early age of six, where he stole bottles of milk from the neighbor's porch. By the time he was 14, he graduated to fencing goods stolen from department stores, and soon he was mastering the art of electronic surveillance. In 1998, he parachuted onto the roof of the Schönbrunn Palace in Vienna, and outwitted security cameras and alarm systems to replace the priceless sissy star with a replica he he'd purchased the previous day from the souvenir shop below, a daring heist that was only discovered weeks later. He then set about robbing a number of banks, usually by surveilling them while they were being built, and then robbing them of their cash the day before they were to be opened. It was during one such heist that an employee of a neighboring Walmart who had been scanning cars parked in the lot noticed odd equipment and later reported the license number to the police. This put a pair of policemen on his tail, and after years of pursuing him and tapping his phones as he went around the world, were able to catch him as he was orchestrating a credit card fraud operation. He cooperated greatly with with police, taking them to the stolen CC Star, and giving them inputs on safe banking practices. He never disclosed the identity of any of his accomplices, even if it meant that he had to serve extra time. He is in the process of developing himself a new career as a security consultant, but who knows what the future has in store. 
At number three on our list is the protagonist of the only successful skyjacking in American history. On Thanksgiving Eve 1971, a man bought a ticket from the Northwest Orient Airline for Flight 305 from Portland, Oregon to Seattle, Washington, under the name of Dan Cooper. He got on the aircraft, a Boeing 727, and ordered a bourbon. Shortly after takeoff, he handed to the flight attendant a note stating he had a bomb in his briefcase to convey that he was hijacking the plane. His demands were $200,000 in cash, four parachutes, and a fuel truck on standby at the Seattle airport. Unlike other hijackers, Dan Cooper was calm, courteous, and thoughtful throughout. To ensure the safety of the passengers and the crew, all his demands were agreed to, and after two hours of circling Seattle while the preparations were being made, the flight landed. Passengers and most of the crew disembarked, and the money and parachutes were handed into the aircraft while it was fueled. Once airborne, Cooper gave detailed instructions to the pilot on flying speed, altitude, and route, and told all the crew to remain in the cockpit. A short while later, the crew realized that the air stairs had been activated, and the aircraft door opened. When the plane landed at Reno, Nevada, Dan Cooper was not found on the aircraft. Somewhere along the way, he had strapped on the money bag and the parachute and jumped off the plane. Several search operations were conducted along the flight route, but Dan Cooper was never found. Some of the ransom money was found by an eight-year-old boy digging in the sand along the river, but nothing else whatsoever. 45 years later in 2016, the FBI finally closed the investigation unsolved. Near the top of our list of the smartest criminals of all time is this set of twins involved in what just might be the perfect crime. In the early hours of the 25th of February 2009, a burglary was committed in one of Berlin's most luxurious department stores. Three individuals wearing masks broke into the second floor of the massive Kadaway building and lowered themselves onto the main floor using a rope ladder. They entered a jewelry store and evaded all security systems, including motion detectors, then walked away with over 6 million euros worth of jewelry and watches. Since it was Sunday, the crime was only discovered the next morning. CCTV footage showed the complete heist, and the police found a key clue to finding the criminals. One glove had been left behind on site, with DNA material that could be traced. Investigations revealed not one, but two perfect matches for the DNA. Two identical twins named Hassan and Abbas O. They were both arrested and taken into custody. But since German law required that there has to be clear evidence that exclusively links each individual to the crime, in this case, it was not possible to distinguish which, if any, of these two brothers was in the store. So they were both set free, and no trace was ever found of either the third man, or more importantly, the loot stolen from the store. At number 10 on our list is Al Capone, probably the most notorious American gangster of the 20th century. He rose to fame as the leader of the Chicago Syndicate during the Prohibition era, building vast interests in prostitution, gambling, as well as illegal breweries and a bootlegging network that stretched across the eastern United States. He cultivated a flashy media image and great relationships with local government and law enforcement, and was even viewed as a modern-day Robin Hood for his criminal activity. But he was also greatly feared for his violent track record of eliminating all competition and obstruction, and he became known as public enemy number one. No less than 33 individuals were supposedly executed at his instructions, but no evidence could ever be found about his involvement in the murders, or even in his illegal activities, until the FBI decided to go after him for tax evasion in 1931. And due to shoddy legal defense on his front, he ended up being sentenced to 11 years in prison. His health started suffering soon after his incarceration, and he became debilitated and never returned to Chicago after he was eventually released from prison. That's it folks, our list of the 10 smartest criminals we know. Do you agree? Disagree? Are there any stories of smart criminals you'd like to share? Do let us know in the comments section. We love hearing from you. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like the video, share with friends, and subscribe to Top Trending for more regular countdown videos such as this one.